What's going on? This is City Wrestling Radio, and this, well, this is our retro uh, retro review of Bash at the Beach 2000, WCW Bash at the Beach 2000, be exact. I'm your host, I'm Corey Smith. Joining me via Zoom video conference call is my co-host, the main roster mate himself, Mr. Jose Oseguera. How are you doing, Mr. Smith? How's everybody out there in internet land? Uh, how long do you think we're going to be doing this uh, Zoom thing? Uh, well, it's more convenient this way. It is. I mean, like, well, let's, like making the trip to Diamond. Like, well, I mean, yeah, but those, what was it? We, we used to do the shows at like 3.30 in the afternoons. Yeah. And now we do them at like some random middle of the night time. Yeah, you know? it's stony time for me, actually. Exactly. Yeah. So it, it's it's... It's one of those things, you know, like maybe, maybe one of these days, if, uh, if anyone wants to give us studio space, that would be good. Wow. Hit, hit us up. an audience. Hmm. Yeah. Hit us up at, uh, at CWR415 or at City Wrestling Radio. But nonetheless, we're not here to beg for your free studio space. We're here to talk about Bash at the Beach 2000, um, a show I think was, um, it was weird. Uh, <laughs> it was definitely prime WCW. We finally got here. We're finally doing it uh, because it's 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 really one of those shows. I think it was like I know the Smart Mark was born before this, but this yeah, is what was... pu- this is what pushed the Smart Mark through to like the number one fan, mm-hmm. not the number one fan like as in like they're fun to be around. <laughs> But like, but I, and I mean smart mark as in like people like you and I, people who are really smart to the industry. People, uh, and there's other people out there who take it too far too. You know what I mean? Hundred uh, percent. But this is when I think it really became like more prevalent. Like, oh, there's backstage drama. Isn't there backstage drama? What's everybody, going on? You know? Yeah, like, and everybody was smart. Everybody exactly. Knew knew the websites. Everybody knew the dirt sheets. Everybody knew where to go. So everybody was smart. And uh, and they played on it, you know. They played on it. This is the night of the infamous Hogan Jarrett title match. Uh, oh, don't spoil nothing. Oh well, we'll get there. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> nonetheless, let's get right into it. Let's ca- let's just let's just start the show, shall we? Let's go. Let's go. It starts. Uh, the show starts off <laughs> with. Uh, so okay, first off, I want to say about this show. It is like two. It's like the year two thousand. So it reminds me of a. TV show from UPN in the year 2000. You know what I'm saying? Like it was just like this production quality. Oh, this, this pro- <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. these really random storylines of like Ernest the Cat Miller, like he knows Kung Fu. Well, he does know Kung Fu. Or it's karate instructor. Karate instructor, yeah. Karate, 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 karate. And these three young dragons trying to attack him, or young lion, was it young dragons, sorry. Uh, young dragons trying to attack him the entire time. Were they night. young or jung? Uh, yeah, if you, if, you, if you go off the Wikipedia page, it mm-hmm. gives you a racist name, uh, but it's the young, it's the young dragons because I, I did that too. I looked on Wikipedia and I was like, what's their names? And I was, it said the Jung dragons. And I was like, oh, mm-hmm. that's really racist. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't want to really say that, but, uh, yeah. uh, uh, but I think they updated that too. Actually on the shows, it used to be Jung and they changed it to young. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Later in the night it said young. Dragons. Y-U-N-G. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like I said, this show is very 2000 as fuck. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. uh, like I said, it starts off with him coming to the arena. Uh, cat tells the limo driver for some reason, he tells the limo driver to inform MIA that, uh, they are barred from ringside for the cruiserweight title tonight. Remember they were low on money these days. Uh, so the, the drivers played double duty. I mean, uh, they, okay. <laughs> so then they own their own driver. Yeah, you know what I mean. So no, this, per- this personal is the, assistance. This is the WCW. This is the cat's personal driver, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he tells them to let MIA know that they are apart from ringside. Uh, that's when the cat is confronted by the young dragons, where he uh, gives them the like the granny sidekicks, and where he's mm-hmm. like, whoosh, 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 whoosh. damn, <sighs> yeah. Uh, they do some really cheesy karate segment, and the show officially starts. Uh, kicks off. With some more uh, 2000 um, spy drama esque graphics coming in. That's all there was at uh, nine o'clock on a Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, then we get get off with uh, Juventud Guerrera uh, being joined by Conan, Disco Inferno, and Rey Mysterio 
versus Lieutenant Loco uh, of the MIA, uh, Chavo Guerrero Jr. Uh, so all members of the Filthy Animals and MIA are barred from ringside. Um, Tony Schiavone states, uh, the bell has rung. It's time to kick off this sports entertainment match. And they were really pushing that sports entertainment the entire night. They said it weird, though, right? They were like, they were like sports. It's sports entertainment. Entertainment. Yeah. 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 They were like, it's not sports entertainment. It's sports entertainment. There's a mm-hmm, slash mm-hmm. there. Okay. Don't worry, Tony. Um, they go back and forth. Uh, oh, what? Wait. We have to let the crowd know that this is a maskless Juventu Guerrera, a maskless uh, Rey Mysterio in the in the filthy animals, and a uh, a hip hop disco inferno. Oh yeah. He was, <laughs> so what's the, worse? What's worse, disco inferno or road dog? I would say road dog, but you, well, you know what? I, I think or no, sorry, uh, or sorry, no, no, uh, disco inferno or. Um, or too cool. See, I want to say that too cool was done with a serious face, and Disco Inferno. It's gonna be awesome. Joke. It was a joke from the beginning. It was okay. This disco guy is gonna be hip hop now. He's At gonna be like, like yo, yo, on. yo, yo. I'm Disco Inferno. Yeah, yeah. That they, you know they they were going for that for that feel. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Def- definitely the guys who took it serious. The appropriators. Uh, who, like I said, everyone was barred from ringside. So Hoovy hugs everyone, uh, all of his teammates goodbye. And he's cause they're they're team players. They're a good, strong team. Uh, Hoovy uh, goes to shake Loco's hand, but Loco slaps Hoovy in the face. Uh, they go back and forth when Hoovy is knocked to the outside and uh, walks up uh, up the rep to the rest of his teammates. Uh, Charles Robinson is being very lenient with the count um, with Hoovy. Uh, I have no idea. Uh, who the baby face and who the heel is in this situation because yeah, yeah. I feel like um, the f- no, I feel like MIA Lieutenant Loco was supposed to be the the face, the right? Face, yeah, yeah, right. I mean, I guess Lieutenant Loco Chavo, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I could see him being the face, but I don't like the rest of his team, you know what I mean? I think yeah. they they all kind of suck. Um, yeah. and the rest of the filthy animals, I'm like, why are they? Why are they bad? Like they just seem like some guys who are just yeah. They Hugh look like Morris. Get it? Humorous. Well, that was a huge erection. Yeah. Or, or Hugh. Hugh. But yeah. he was at, yeah. First he was Hugh Morris, and yeah. then they turned him into huge E erection. Yeah. I don't and know. So you know, it, it, general it, erection. <laughs> yo, that's what it was. General erection. Yeah. Huge erection. Yeah. Uh, so it just it, it took me a second to like get into that aspect of the match. I was trying to figure mm-hmm. that out uh, because I felt like Juventud was the face in this match. Yeah, uh, yeah course, that, but that's what I felt. Uh, both men clothesline each other, uh, and both are down. They battle to the outside. Uh, Chavo, uh, sorry, I mean Lieutenant Loco, <laughs> goes for a flying splash to Hoovy on the outside, uh, and that's when uh, four uh, mysterious masked men come to ringside. Who could it be? They're yeah, wearing like, jerseys. Uh, <laughs> it was like obviously the filthy animals. They what kind of were they? Were these the uh, the Clinton mask or were these just some? Like random clown masks. No, they remember. were like animal masks. Okay, so yeah, the filthy animals. Like one wore, uh, I don't know, like a dog. And the other one was a panda. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this goes on for about one minute until the backup refs uh, come out to kick the animals from ringside, <laughs> and yeah. and it, c- it cuts a close up of Ray, a maskless Ray, and he's just like, ah, oh, come on, man, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, no. Go, Thank get out of here, Ray. You're banned from ring size. Oh, fine. I'm going to go. Like, I I go. Later, Hoovy. Uh, then Hoovy goes for a crazy springboard leg drop to Lieutenant Loco. Uh, I don't know why the animals came out to ringside because it really led to nowhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Charles Robinson. It was just a, I think it was just to emphasize that we're, they were banned. I, yeah, I guess. Yeah, but the entire night, the refs were not enforcing anything. Oh, my God. Like, it, it gets worse. This is like worse than New Japan Pro Wrestling leniency here. Mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. It, was just, it was bad. Every match was D, no DQ. You know what? Charles Robinson just refed a match at Money in the Bank. And got hurt, yeah. And you know, wait, he got hurt? Well, you know, according to storyline. Oh. Remember when an edge fell on his knee? Oh, I didn't see that part. Uh, but 20-something years. Can okay? you peacock? 
You know, I'm glad to see he's getting a little bit better, though. Mm-hmm. You know? He looks the same, right? He, he really does. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Where was I? Okay. Uh, falling splash to Loco. Modified Liger Bomb to Loco. Now the members of MIA come out to ringside with masks on. Uh, these I think are- they come with, like, George Clinton and... <laughs> no, I was, oh, they were like president. It was like Bill Clinton and uh, not George Bill Clinton. George Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been awesome, though, if uh, General Erection came out with a George Clinton mask. I would have yeah, been would legitimately- kind of liking it. Um, while the refs are distracted, Major Guns comes out to the ring. And uh, like I said, she bears arms. Sorry, I got to get that line in. I wrote it down, so I got to <laughs> get it in as many times as I can. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Hoobie is distracted, falls off the top rope. We got a Mishinoku driver eventually to Lieutenant Loco. Uh, but that's when Hoovy goes for a pin. Loco gets his foot on the rope. Tornado DDT to uh, Hoovitude Guerrero. And then uh, we just get a pin the in the win. New, the new. Was he the new? I thought he was. Uh... No, Hoovy was a champ. No, he wasn't, was he? Yeah, he was. Oh. And the new. Oh, okay. Well, I guess uh, the graphics will have the power of uh, hindsight. <laughs> um, yeah, they, they will win this one. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, I thought it was like a, like, it wasn't that fun. Like it was fun. Like they actually had some good back and forth Lucha stuff, you know, shot young Chavo Guerrero got a lot of energy. Who went to Guerrero? This is him in his prime. Who we made that dude look amazing. Well, like you would, you would think, Oh my God, Chavo, you're, you're amazing. But it's Chavo. It is. But has he ever had a match this great? Yeah, there was a lot of fuckery, else? but it's WCW in the year 2000, so you can't. Sure, I'm, no, I'm talking about work rate, yeah, specifically. Yeah, you yeah. know, yeah, no, I, I feel you. Uh, both of these guys looked really good in the match, and uh, I will say this though the action in the match was good, uh, but there was too much bullshit in this match, uh, that led to the nothing. opener. Uh, well, why you are, had to get major guns involved, somehow. like they're all barred from ringside, and like, okay, here's the thing I don't get these guys are barred from ringside, right. Why is the ref the only one that can do anything about it? Like, yeah, there are commissioners commission. watching. They're, like, watching didn't the show. Say, don't come in. Don't get involved. Yeah. Don't yeah. Get involved. Exactly. Like, isn't he watching the show? Isn't some executive back there, like, watching the show thinking, hey, those guys, hold on, you know, um, I don't know, play ACDC for my music. I don't know. I, I, mm. And just some mm. random guys, like, excuse me, nay, nay, I fill out the suspension forms. It just, to me, it, it seems kind of ridiculous. I, yeah, well, I mean, we know that the commissioner is actually kind of busy. He's taking phone calls trying to figure out where uh, Hulk Hogan is. And he's dealing with the young dragons because they're sneaking up on him all of a sudden in the back. So is the young dragon things like one of those, like, attack me at all times? You it know what like I mean? Like, father, yeah. Like, it, it's, I've seen it on a couple different TV shows where they're like, they get a, like a dojo master or karate master and they're like, okay. Karate Master's like, okay, I will attack, surprise attack you. Did we mention who the members of the Young Dragons were? I know one of them was Jamie Noble. Yeah, yeah, 100%. the one in the mask was Jamie. So mm-hmm. uh, you get like a racist Jamie Noble. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't want to think of the stuff he was saying while doing those bits. Oh boy. <laughs> who were the other guys though? Do you remember Stage. Jimmy Yang? Jimmy Yang. Oh, Jimmy Wang Yang. Yeah, he was one of them. You know, he uh, for a while he uh, did a party bus thing. Shut up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I guess after he was a wrestler, he moved to like back to Memphis, and he did a party. Like he owned a party bus, and they did mm-hmm. a "Where are they now?" WWE segment, and the party wow. bus wasn't even that like spectacular. Mm. It was just like a shuttle bus, like not one was of those. Pole? I think there was a pole in it, but it was like a shuttle okay. bus, but it looked like, you know, like lights were like glued on <sighs> and they were showing it like in the daytime. I'm like, yeah. come on. The guy, tint had bubbles in it. Come on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it, it was bad. Um, uh. But yeah, anyways, uh, Kat asked, uh, oh yeah, so these guys do a rush hour skit. Can you understand the words that are coming out of mm-hmm. my mouth? Yeah. Which everybody was doing at the time. Hey, oh, uh, rush hour. Yeah, 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 just like the Austin Powers uh Impressions. Oh, behave. Jeff Jarrett walks into the office and he wants to know where Hogan is. Say he says, "Cause the fat lady's gonna sing tonight." Where Where is she? Sorry, he he's pre AJ Styles. He gets the AJ Styles voice. There you go. Before C year two thousand. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Jeff Jarrett, I don't know, man. I, I guess I didn't watch. I didn't watch enough WCW at this era. Like, I I was glued when I was Ask a away. kid. When I was a kid, I stopped at about 
like right before Goldberg turned heel. I stopped. Hmm. Like and WC, WCW Silver and Black. I think it was when the logo changed. That's when it was. Yeah. I stopped. I just was like, no, I'm too invested into the Attitude Era. I'm fully into this WWF stuff now. Mm-hmm. Like you got guys flipping off people off. You guys guys could tell me to suck it. And I don't know <laughs> I don't know what it means, but I like watching this a lot better. Mm-hmm. And well, my, I'm sorry, WCW had major guns. Yeah. They they had Kimberly. Um not, some of the Nitro girls were sprinkled onto the show. They became um Yeah. You know, like managers and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Like um uh, uh Miss Hancock. Oh, Stacey Keebler. She was a Nitro girl first. Was she? Was Stor- uh, Tori Wilson as well? Tori Wilson was not. She was actually a valet. Okay. Uh, then we get the... So w- they had Tori Wilson. Oh, my God. Yeah, see? Uh, WCW hardcore title match. Big Vito versus <sighs> his surprise opponent, Screamin' Norman Smiley. Oh, sorry. Screamin' Norman Smiley and... What was it? Ralphus? Ralphus. Ralphus. Chris Jericho's old valet. Okay. So why the fuck is Ralphus in this match, man? Why why was he continued to comedy, work there? All comedy. I know, but like, <laughs> there were just uh, he tried his heart. He he really did try. Oh, yeah. Bless his heart. He tried. he had no business being in that ring. I'll tell you that. None, none whatsoever. Or not even or in, in the, the back. Or, in, or the back, in the back. Or <laughs> or in front of that camera. Uh, or in bes- concessions. Besides yeah. walking to a ring, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. I feel like his role would have been bet well. Once or I don't know. It was funny. I enjoyed it when I was younger, but he mm-hmm. had no business being in a ring, you know. Agreed. Uh, so apparently, Big Vito was supposed to face uh, Terry Funk tonight, and uh, but Vito took him out earlier in the week on Thunder. Uh, we were told that Vito is going to have a mystery replacement tonight. Who can it be? But Norman Smiley and for some reason I wrote Rufus Ralphus. They yeah, spell spell check auto correct. Yeah. Uh, Vito makes it, makes us a handicap match, uh, makes quick work of Ralphus with a kendo stick, basically just beats the shit out of both of them for a while. He drags. Yeah. I love the hockey pants though, right? Oh, on Norman Smiley. Yeah. Oh, I love it's Norman. Super Smiley. padded up. So see, here's the thing about this match. I was kind of invested because both of these characters mm-hmm. are interesting. Vito mm-hmm. looks really good. Vito looks like a million bucks. You know what I mean? He right. was big. He like looked Especially like for the time, he, yeah. He looked like he can kill you. Um, and Norman Smiley, I mean, he was comedy, but he was an old school wrestler that mm-hmm. transitioned into comedy. Yeah. So he knew his shit. You know what yeah, I mean? He, he can get you, yeah. So uh yeah, so I, I enjoyed that aspect of it. Um Vito, Don't he still have a job in WWE? Yeah, I think he works in uh, At the NXT. performance center. Yeah. Uh, Vito drags Smiley to the back. That's when Smiley takes over with a series of weapon shots and uh, even lets uh, Ralphus get a couple of shots in with a trash can, which I do oh, love because Ralphus is like waiting. He's like, and he's like, oh, not now, not now. Okay. Mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm. now. Ugh. Ugh. And he's super careful too. He was like, I don't want to, oh, I shouldn't sling this as hard as I can. And I wasn't there a spot where Norma was like, just keep hitting him. And he's like, yeah. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> so don't, don't Ugh. stop. Go, go, go. Yeah. Uh, Norman, like I said, uh, the Vito throws, uh, takes over, throws Norman into an elevator and then closes the door. That's when it's just Ralphus for some reason, who's running to the ring, which would be the first, cause it, I guess, okay. WCW hardcore match. The match has to end in the ring. Wait, I don't, I don't know about that rule. This match did. Well, I mean, it, okay. Well, it. <laughs> this match, they said you had to get back to the ring to win the match. Oh, wow. So kind of like the. Uh, the that dumb uh, casket match we saw later. Uh, uh, well, the, like you have to all matches have to finish inside the. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. WCW logic at this the time. Least, it was all yeah. kinds of fucked up. <laughs> uh, so then Vito chases Ra- uh, Ralphus to the ring. Uh, the crowd starts chanting for Ralphus. That's when uh, <laughs> Vito beats down on him with a kendo shot and to the gut. Uh, this is when I just started feeling bad for Ralphus. Yeah, he's getting the shit beat out of him. Yeah. Uh, Vito then gets uh, gets a table out of the from under the ring. It's a broken table. Uh, I guess one of the legs isn't kicking up, but he just leans it to the side. He lays Ralphus on the table and gives Ralphus a frog splash. My God! Uh, yeah. And he landed with full weight on him. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Ralphus. And the thing the thing was that I felt the worst about it is that it was a uh, it was like they had to call it on the flight. Like, 
well, this isn't working. We're going to have to do it the way we didn't plan to. Yeah, so, yeah. It, so then they're like being like an untrained performer. You're probably like, oh, we're going to do it as planned. Wait, what do you mean the plan's not going through as we, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. No, wait, we got to We're going to do it on this broken table? I didn't practice on break, broken tables. <laughs> well, I didn't do anything on this broken table. And Ralph was there. God rest That's probably his dream to be arrested back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, heard, I heard he was super. He worked on the, was it the road crew? Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, he drove a truck. Yeah, Jericho eventually just like paid him 20 bucks. Like, hey, you want to be on TV? He's mm-hmm. like, sure, I'll be on TV. <laughs> yeah, let's draw on your T-shirt. Yeah. Uh, this lo- this match was loads of wackiness, uh, which was it's what it set out to be, uh, mm-hmm. because they didn't have their scheduled Terry Funk match. I guess if this was a Terry Funk versus Big Vito match, you would have got a little bit more of a hardcore match, mm-hmm. and we saw some comedy. blood. Yeah, uh, that's when Goldberg, uh, heel Goldberg, arrives to the arena. Billy. And uh, Mean Gene is backstage with Kevin Nash. And uh, Nash is just the most, like, doesn't give a shit about anything going on in the world. Yeah, he, he like, gave up. He was like, fuck <laughs> this. Collecting a paycheck today. Oh, look at Goldberg. I'm gonna kick They're like, ass, I guess. So, okay, Goldberg and Kevin Nash are having a match tonight uh, for Scott Hall's contract mm-hmm. uh, that apparently Goldberg possesses, but he doesn't want to rip up. Because apparently he could just, like, rip it up and take it or whatever. And he ate it weeks ago. And yeah, yeah, and <laughs> he, he ate it mouth. weeks ago. So where did he get, where did he like, did he like, oh, okay, hold on. He had to spit it out and dry it. <laughs> like, put it over, uh, you know, go like to the hotel room and put it over the heater. <laughs> <laughs> Got the iron uh, in between the blankets. Exactly. So he's fighting for um, Scott Hall's contract, who isn't there, who I'm guessing is probably. He's probably going through some demons at the time. Exactly. Uh, and Nash is just like, yeah, well, I'm going to go in the ring tonight, and uh, Goldberg, ah, oh, he's got nothing in common. Big sex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was like, I'm going to put the least amount of energy as possible on this. Yeah. Later on, Goldberg, I'm really going to get in there, and I'm going to kick your ass. I'll see you later, buddy. Boy. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it was just, no. Uh, Nash says tonight that he may... Uh, he said he might take a survey tonight. He knows that will piss Goldberg off. I was like, what? Goldberg's already pissed off anyway. What Goldberg hates surveys? Yeah. Like, I, I know it's like a Scott Hall thing, like, because they did the survey says, you know, bad bad guys won or whatever. Score one more for the bad. good guys or the, the bad, bad guys, guys, depending yeah. on his mood. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> depending on his mood tonight, yes. Um, so, yeah, it, it just, it was... Kevin Nash didn't give a shit about what was going. Well, you know, Kevin Nash did have the sweetest contract there. Mm-hmm. He had that contract where he nobody could make more than him, and if anyone did get paid more than him, he would get a bump and he would get a raise above them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. But he can't be happy because this is when they took away his uh, booking power. Yeah, yeah. Because this is when I believe it's when Eric Bischoff and Russo united. Uh, this is post New Blood. I mean, New yeah. Blood was, was Russo and Eric Bischoff. Storyline. Storyline. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, they didn't like each other so much backstage. Yeah. yeah they no. needed each other, dummies. <laughs> you know what, though? They do seem like two just like shady individuals who are like, hey, bro, listen, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to go at you. We're going to do this. I'm going to say, fuck you. And, you. and he goes, oh, yeah. And I'm going to come out and I'm going to say, screw you. And we're going to make peace with it. We're going to make a lot of money. You know mm-hmm. I mean? mm-hmm. <laughs> Allegedly. Uh, then we move on to uh, my match of the night. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, Miss Hancock, Stacey Keebler versus Daphne. Uh, this is a wedding gown match. Uh, uh, I didn't even give out match times earlier in the night, did I? Ah, who cares? Uh, anyway, <laughs> you saw it on the screen because the um, graphics I'm, were made. Okay, let me guess. The first match was 15 minutes. The hardcore match was 10. First match was 12 minutes and 7 seconds. Oh, okay, was it was right pretty close. Uh, let's see. Uh, and second match, no, it was 5 minutes and 5 seconds. The hardcore oh, match. It just felt like an eternity. Yeah, it did feel like 10 minutes. And uh, so it's Miss Hancock versus Daphne. I don't know why I say it like that. But 4 minutes and 14 seconds of, of just pure wrestling fun. Oh, my God. Dude, uh, I don't know. I felt maybe like I had something wrong with my TV. But all I saw was green. Oh. 
green everywhere. Green, 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 green. I don't know. What what is wrong with your TV? I had some green ass wrestlers in there. Hey, oh, ah, hey, yeah. For a second, I was like, Zing. I was like, is your tint? Is that what it is? is something wrong? <laughs> did you adjust the color ratio? Like, is it is the brightness? Um, I was like, I did see that article about the green haze. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. but I was a huge fan of uh, Daphne back in the day. You know, I was looking at this match, and so Daphne was always okay. I don't know much about Daphne, so you might have to fill me in on some blanks. She was like the girlfriend of David Flair. She was a super fan. Her gimmick started off that she was a super. If I, my memory serves me correct, she was a David Flair super fan. Oh, and, event, so and, she always, and she always and she always screamed from like, ah, "I love you, David." Yeah. And then they brought her in as talent. Okay, so well, I mean, she was probably already talent. <laughs> it's not like when Santino Morella got hired when he won the Intercontinental title, mm-hmm. am I right? Oh, yeah. Exactly. Uh, no, so, but okay, so to me, was Daphne like supposed to be like ugly? Was the, Were they trying to make that assumption? Like she's like crazy and ugly. Uh. To me, she was one of the prettiest girls I in the game was, at the time. I thought she was very good looking, even yeah, like watching thick. this. I was, I was like, yeah, she she looks pretty good. Don't I always dug her? It's just that you know the preferred look back then was blondes. I mean, you know, the, Sable, the, the Stacey, Tori Cable. Wilson, Stacey, Stacey Keebler, Keebler yeah. uh, you know, uh, just anyone. Throw a rock in WWE and you'll hit a blonde. Yeah, uh, WWE. Well, that's why w, uh, Stacey Keebler and Tori Wilson uh, were some of the first to go to um, you know WWE. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So Tony Schiavone's quotes, and I quote Tony Schiavone on this one: uh, "Story so sad." It's better than a soap opera. <laughs> uh, so the story of this match is, um, okay, so Stacey Keebler was like the associate of David Flair after she w- he was with Daphne, right? He was already with Daphne, and then she came into the picture. And she yeah. was like working with David Flair, and it was like an affair type situation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then he starts leaving uh, Daphne, and friend of the show Crowbar is like, I'm guessing – the desperate best friend of Daphne. Like he wants to get with Daphne. He's like hiding his feelings for her. And he knows yeah. that she's been, yeah. you know, going through the ringer. He's the ducky. Yep. If you watch pretty in pink, he's the ducky of the crew. Uh, yeah. So, uh, there's cake outside the ring and there will continue to be cake outside the ring for the Talk rest about of the foreshadowing. show. Uh, David Flair comes out to the ring with uh, Miss Hancock. Uh, Flair and Hancock make you out. Know, can I say something first? Oh, absolutely. You're yeah. trying to do this innuendo stuff, and you know, let's get risque. I am. It, uh, Hancock is just stupid. It is. <laughs> Miss Hancock. Well, see what it's Vin, trying to imply. Vince is, eh? number two. Vince number two, please. Well, hey, bro, this is the guy who wrote the Attitude Era, bro. He knows what he's doing here, all right? Oh, well, he had a Miss Hancock, get it? The boys will love it out there. You know, all those guys, they'll buy Miss Hancock posters. They'll see Hancock. They'll want to put their hand. Who do you have to answer to? Pritchard, right? And then Vince? There's always there's always like a, a filter to, to Vince. You know what I mean? Like he might be the head booker, but he had to pass it through some executive to get it into Vince's hands. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. I agree. Uh, let's see, where was I? Slow, uh, back and forth. Okay, so Flair and Hancock are making out during Daphne's intro, which is very rude. I, I don't know. Very, very rude. Uh, um, uh, and, uh, and she gives Flair a low blow. Like, I don't even know why he's not paying attention. Like, I mm-hmm. would have paid a little bit more attention to that. You would think, yeah. Uh, slow back and forth tussling between the two uh, ladies. For some reason, David Flair and the ref uh, begin uh, to get between the two women, breaking them up. This is a wrestling match, and mm-hmm. two men feel like they need to separate these women. I don't know why. It's not like they were, you know, it's not like there were thumbtacks in the ring and they were yeah. beating the hell out of each other with sledgehammers, yeah. or there was a giant mallet in the ring. No, I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is that these two women were trying to wrestle their hearts out, and these two misogynistic... No, I'm kidding. Uh, these two guys <laughs> try to break them up, though, and it was just really weird. I don't know. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Just let them fight. Let them fight. What the hell? Just ring the bell already. Uh, Hancock then slaps the ref in the face, deservably, and, uh, and then Daphne slaps David. David always looks like a deer in the headlights, right? He does. No matter if he's you know doing offense or defense, he's always like... Why don't they blank. bring David into WWE just like once? Just like, oh just for an angle. No, I think he's like done. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm uh, a dad. You know, well, dad yeah, bod. Their I'm family's been through a lot. Uh, Hancock then low blows the ref and uh, rips his pants off. Mm-hmm. So, oh, okay. These grown women 
are now ripping pants off of men. I, I, to me, it was just like, I, I don't get this. Yeah. It was and, they, and for some reason, they're wearing breakaway pants. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, David Flair wearing these like breakaway <laughs> pants. Uh, let's see. So the third commentator. I, oh, so who are the commentators of this show? I forgot. Oh, oh it's uh, Mark, Mark it whack ass Sh- Madden. I, just, I Mark didn't want to yeah, say, Mad- say bad Shavani. things about. Yeah. And the professor or something, something. Yeah. They, they, they just, Tony Schiavone, even Tony Schiavone isn't like, you can tell he gave up. You know what I mean? He's, but he's trying his best not to sound like he gave up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, here I am, Vince. I'm really trying. I swear. So I think it was Mark Madden or it was the other. Oh, he was horrible. Mark who Madden said, so uh, bad said uh, about Stacey Keebler. He goes, oh, she looked like she knew what she was doing when taking those pants off. And I'm like, no shit. Like, I'm sure Stacey Keebler, and this is not even like a sexual thing, has taken off pants before. We all have. Uh, I'm sure she wears them on occasion. Even if you haven't, (laughs) they're pretty easy to figure out. One, put one leg into the same side pant leg. Two, put your other leg into the other pant. Three, pull the pants up to your waist. Four, pull up the zipper and fasten the button or snap. Ta-da! Daphne slaps David and then uh, then pants is him. Daphne knocks David down, slams Hancock's head into the turnbuckle, uh, then slam Hancock's head into David's ding dong, and uh, and so I I felt like this ref. Like what is up with this? What is, this ref is wearing? Like first off, he knew he was getting pants, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm everyone sure. knew, and he is like wearing these. Like he's got his ref shirt tucked into his tidy whiteies, <laughs> and they're it's almost coming out the bottom. And no, they are coming out the bottom. They're like a, it's like a referee romper. Yeah, yeah which yeah. I think is something that <laughs> should be romper. done. Like okay, like okay for like theme shows. There's like Effie's Big Gay Brunch, uh, done by GCW every couple of months or whatever. He should like get the referees to do like a referee romper, like wearing rompers. I think it's the best thing ever, but hey, <laughs> that's just me. Uh, Bring it back. It's uh, been 21 years. Bring it back. David and Hancock uh, then try to uh, shave uh, uh, Daphne's head. Eventually, down the line, you know, storyline wise, they, they eventually cut her hair. I think it's a hair versus hair match with Keebler, and her okay. and Crowbar go on to be a couple. Okay. Uh, well, speaking of Crowbar, he comes out to the ring for the save. Uh, he then proceeds to strip himself and uh, beats <laughs> down on David Flair. I think this was like the whole stripping thing was like a nod to Rick, right? Remember when Rick stripped in the ring? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I, that's I what think... I felt like this was. And I felt like that's what Crowbar was doing. Now that you say it, yeah. Crowbar definitely came off like that, yeah. Um, Then Crowbar, uh, then he begins to choke uh, David Flair with a pair of jeans. Daphne then uh, has uh, the shears in her hands. That's when Miss Hancock gets on the mic, and she says, wait, wait, wait. I know what you all came here to see. Hit my music. And she, she rips off, and I swear to God, one piece of fabric, one. And the match is over. Mm-hmm. So Daphne was covered head to toe. She had the longest dress, which I think is smart. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because you don't and see that. And I think that. it was, I think it even had an inner liner. Yeah. Cause you don't see that in, in evening gown match. You see like, like, especially in this era, like women mm-hmm. wearing like short dresses, cocktail dresses or whatever. Mm-hmm. And Stacy Keebler was wearing one piece of fat. Like she was wearing other clothes, but apparently those didn't have to be taken off for her to lose the match. Yeah. It was just like her little skirt. Well, she was down to her skeebies. What can you do? Hey, hey, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not complaining. I'm no, just no, saying, it's a... wear more. If, if the, if the, if the <laughs> obstacle of the match is like for, if the other person's going to take off all your clothes, you lose, then wear more clothes. Like okay. come down to the ring in like a parachute. hundred percent. But we obviously know she doesn't care about winning because she ends up, Throwing the match herself. She forfeits. Yes, we have a forfeit yeah. win for Daphne. Uh, Crowbar was the only. I feel like Crowbar was the only like one good thing about this match. Yeah, and he's know. the only legit worker too. And the fact that I want a referee romper now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Daphne then sho- uh, shoves. Uh, it, 
Oh, she shoves a cake in Miss Hancock's face. Everyone brawls ringside into cake. And they are just like brawling everywhere. And cake is getting everywhere. And so the show takes like a 10-minute break. It has to. Because they are trying to clean up this cake. Dude, did you see the uh, – okay, I don't know if you noticed it. I did. They, I know exactly what you're about to say. <laughs> right, go on. So they, they cut to the cleanup crew, and there's this one guy with the smallest little piece of, like, paper towel, and he throws it on the ground to clean <laughs> up the frosting, and it just kind of goes <laughs> – Yeah, he does that. that. To no avail. He does what I, uh, what I call – it's like lazy dad clean. Yeah. And I hate to blame dads for that, but it's just like – it's like you spray, like, the multipurpose on the floor, and then you put mm. the paper towel down, and you just, like, use your foot over yeah, it, yeah. and you're just like – uh, it's cool. Like I, I got it. It's fine. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. No. And then, but then the other guy next to him, he's like, "Come on, man." He he's like using a mop. Oh man. He just no. Oh yeah, the guy using the mop he's on the other side. Using a mop on the other side. <laughs> but then the, the smartest one of all, he just picks up the mat, <laughs> flips it over. Yeah, that would have been me. I like fuck this. We're just yeah. flip it over, guys. Uh, use the other side. Come on, we'll clean it later. And yeah, the show's like derailed for like ten minutes, and you have to the cut to the commentators just like. Wow, guys. Wow. Tonight. What did we just witness? Oh, wow. Like that. That is crazy. Wow. Man, where's Kate. Hogan? Yeah. Where is Hogan? Is he going to show up? Oh, I don't know. You know. Yeah. We might get heat for it. I don't know. On the internet. Mm. All Hold night. On, I'm getting, all I'm night, getting man. word. All yeah. night. Fucking, fucking insider terms. It's just. Yeah. Yeah. That, my friend, is what we call a shoot. Yeah. It's not a work. This is a shoot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just, it's it, it was funny. It's funny looking back at it. Mm-hmm. Like I guess at the time, like I could see people being really mad. Like, oh, how could they? Yeah, you know. And I could see people really. Getting, but at the end of the day, I will get there. I'll talk more about yeah. it. Oh my god! Oh my god! They're breaking kayfabe. Oh my god! That's what yeah. they wanted. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll get there. I'll talk more about mm-hmm. it. Uh, the cat is overlooking some paperwork. Uh, walking Again, the arena. Here the. Creepy ninja music. Being stalked by the young... I keep writing young lion. I was a young lion, young dragons. Uh, the yeah. perfect event, uh, <laughs> Chuck Palumbo and Sean Stasiak defending their... W- Glad you edit these. <laughs> the WCW... <laughs> their WCW tag team titles against Chronic. The team of Brian Adams and Brian Clark. 13 minutes and 34 seconds. I mean, I thought this was a pretty fun match. Yeah, it was cool. Do you know why they're called the perfect event? Why is that? Because... Oh my goodness! Who was the mate? So, oh, it, it was uh, uh, what's that? Was it's Chuck Palumbo, right? Yeah, it's John. So Cesar. he went after Mister Perfect. Yeah, right. And he kicked his ass and took his moniker, the perfect Mister Perfect, right? Okay. And Sean Stasiak went after Lex Luger. Oh, that's why they had the the fle- the Lex Flexer. Yeah, and he was the main event. What is that thing? What is that Lex so, Flexer thing? I don't. I don't <laughs> it's like. Like, I don't know what it is. Yeah, no, me neither. Okay, sorry, so, go on. Oh, it's a bar that you bend like this to get your traps. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, so, yeah, so they, instead of being Mr. Perfect in the main event, they were the perfect event. Hey. And chronic, okay. because supposedly maybe these guys smoke weed in the back. That's what I'm assuming, because Mr. Russo loves his reality TV. Well, they had the finishing move called the High Times. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, whatever. I mean, it gets over with the kids. Chronic. Yeah, they look like good. That, just like that uh, Dr. Dre album. What is it? Uh, Brian Adams. That's a uh, that's a uh, atom bomb, isn't it? You know what? I thought it was, but I then it I it, like they were confusing me. I thought that Brian Adams was so, the atom bomb, but it turns out that that's Brian Clark. Clark. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but, uh, that's according to WCW. They, they may have fucked up. Yeah. Because atom bomb only makes sense for Brian Adams, right? That's true. Uh, Adams and Palumbo start the match. Uh, Abbas makes quick work uh, of the main event and knocks them uh, to the outside. Uh, this prompts the main event to grab their titles and just leave. Uh, they come back, and uh, Brian Clark and Stasiak just get in the ring. It was like, okay, Adam uh, <laughs> uh, cuts <laughs> just off. Say Brian. Just uh, say Brian. Yeah, Brian. Brian. Yeah, Brian. Brian uh, cuts off the former meat every chance he gets. Uh, <laughs> the former meat. This is the former meat, yes. Sean Stasiak. Uh, Adams hits uh, the fatty boom baddie on Palumbo. Uh, you couldn't name these. I mean, you know, 2000. Vince Russo, what are you going to do? Adam cuts off, uh, uh, cuts off the ropes and uh, knocked to the outside by the main event, 
who double team him and beat him down with a chair in front of the ref, I mind you. That's what's called a bong rip. Hey. <laughs> also, uh, the ringside is just still covered in cake. Yeah. Uh, main event uh, is building heat on Brian Adams. Uh, I also, uh, the ref is like doing some very close three counts in this match too. I don't know if you got this. I don't know if this ref is very good or mm-hmm. very bad at his job, mm-hmm. but he is just like, these three counts are this close to hitting three. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know. Like I said, he's either really Maybe good. Maybe he can wait for the match to end. Exactly. Uh, so Adams almost choked out, uh, but then he gains uh, some superhuman strength and uh, breaks out of the sleeper hold, uh, gets a hot, hot tag to Clark. A.K.A. the roach clip. Is that what it's called? We just, <laughs> I'm making yeah. shit up as we go along, yeah, just like we so The roach did. clip. <laughs> uh, eventually, though, uh, Chronic then goes for the high time. Uh, gets the uh, pin and win on it was like a it was like a doomsday, like a doomsday power bomb type yeah. move. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, to meet the former meet, and uh, Adams gets the pin on the former meet Sean Stasiak, and they are the new tag team champions. It's not called a pin; it's called a blunt squash. There we go. It's called the the uh, I don't know the ash the ash tray. The almost superhero. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> the, the roach in the ashtray. Uh, despite some sloppy moments, I did genuinely enjoy this match. Like, I liked it. Movie shit. I liked it. I thought they all looked, like, really good. Like, I thought they all looked good. They were all young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they all showed massive potential, you know? And maybe Especially it was... Especially Palumbo. Palumbo. Maybe it was be good. Punch. Maybe it was good because it was next to the uh, evening gown match. <laughs> and you know the, what I mean? The evening gown match made it shine, yeah. Yeah, that exactly. Could be it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Uh, Cat is backstage. Uh, oh, and the new yeah, champions. Yeah, tag team, tag team champions. Cr- chronic. Chronic. <laughs> chronic. If, if that happened in WE today, yeah. you would hear, like, bong water before they came out. Cat uh, backstage in his office. Uh, you can hear the fans chant, you suck. Uh, Jarrett says, uh, I said, time's up. Where's Hogan? I'm about to I'm about to mess up your show. You know, got a fat lady right here. She's gonna sing. It's over for Hogan. And they had the fat ladies for Nitro or Thunder, but they had like three. Yeah, yeah. And like tonight, they only could afford one. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was also a segment too in like Mike Awesome, the fat chick thriller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like flirting with him. He's like, mm-hmm. was like he was oh, a chubby chick. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. No, he was the fat chick thriller. He wasn't a Sorry. chubby chick. Right. He right. thrilled. Mm-hmm. Fat chicks. That's the that, that was his gimmick. That's not me. That's him. Somebody actually said, hmm, I like it. He thrills fat chicks. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so then we get Positively Canyon uh, versus versus Booker T. So, okay, what's up with Book, with uh, Canyon and this whole DDP thing? Okay, well, at first he had a crew with DDP. They were called like the New Jersey something or other. Yeah, it was like him, Bam Bam Joyzy, Bigelow, right? You know? Yeah. yeah, and then they broke up, and he had beef with DDP, which was good because they had a really good program. So um, why does he come out with a and you with can a go? Wig? I don't remember why. I think he was, you know, it was that jealousy thing. He's like, I can do you better than you can do you. Okay. Neat. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But, I mean, Canyon's a hell of a worker. Always has been. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this, the crowd is solidly behind Booker T. Oh yeah, that, Booker T's over as hell. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I don't really know what to say about this match, though. Like, they go back and forth the entire match, uh, eventually leading to, you know, Alabama bomb to book. You know, I don't yeah. know. It was just it's a match. Standard, it was a match. Standard, yeah, it was your standard match. Uh, I did have in my notes that Booker T seems to me to be the master of American strong style. Yeah. Because he was hitting some nice clotheslines on uh, DDK, Diamond Dallas Canyon. Oh, um, Mark Madden is the worst ever. That's part of my notes. I'm sorry, Mark Madden, if you're listening, but you know, you could be better. Um, Jeff Jarrett ruins what could have been a really good match. Yeah. But what do you do? You know? Yeah. Uh, so uh, towards the end of the match, Booker T is on the top rope. That's when, uh, Booker is, uh, pushed off, uh, by Jeff Jarrett and, uh, or hits him in the head with a guitar. Sorry. 
and gets the canyon yeah, yeah. cutter. Given on. reason for later. Yeah. yeah. Give him more incentive. Uh, mm-hmm. Gives the canyon cutter to Booker T and the pin in the that wind. That was a top for, rope canyon cutter. Uh, sorry, an atomic canyon cutter. Uh, the pin in the wind. So uh, it was a good match. I mean, I felt like Canyon was in control for most of the match and for a little bit too long. Uh, mm. But, it, you know, I don't know. They both seem to be kind of like blown as soon as the bell rang. Or gassed or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, gassed, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and, you know, Booker T went through his uh, through his move set very ABC. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. There was a lot of backstage stuff going on that night, so. Mm-hmm. And we'll get there. Oh, we'll get there. Yeah, so we go back to Chubby Chaser and Mike Awesome. I mean, the fat chick thriller. Yeah, the fat chick thriller. Like, for some reason, I keep running Mike Knox down. Uh, Mike Awesome is uh, asked about his match with Big Papa Pump tonight. He says stuff. Uh, then we get the <laughs> actual match. We get uh, Mike Awesome versus Scott Steiner with Medeja uh, for the uh, Melinda Medeja Flores for the uh, U- U.S. title. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Steiner starts off the match by uh, waiting. <laughs> so he's like waiting for Knox on the apron, and Mike like so he's waiting on the apron on the edge, like facing the ramp. And Mike Awesome walks down and fucking like. Steiner just jumps off the rope and, like, gives him a double axe handle. Like, the <laughs> slowest double axe handle. I'm like, why didn't Awesome just go the other way? Just just avoid it, you know what I mean? It, yeah. Uh, they they battle oh. the crowd. Oh, sorry, go on. Really quick, can we talk about if the freaks in the front row were plants or were they legit? There was a lot uh, of them. Yeah. But it, I don't want to say freaks. There was a lot of. Uh, yeah, there were a lot of very sexy women. Very sexy at the women show. in the crowd. Yes. Yeah. And, well, I mean, where they in? It was They're Florida, right? Dayton. Yeah. Or Daytona. Daytona. The, the Ocean Center. Yeah. I mean, this is summertime in Daytona, Florida. Mm-hmm. In the ninety or two thousand, so people have. Yeah. Their, so yeah, mm-hmm. they, they are are all filled up on Bud Lights and those <laughs> disposable cameras. There you go. I'm sure someone brought their digital camera though, but you know, it could only hold like 25 photos and like mm, the memory card was this big. Yeah, you know. Uh, so, anyways, uh, where was I? Uh, double X handle. They oh, go yeah. back into the ring. Yeah, basically the beginning of the match. <clears throat> I'll give it to WCW though. They okay, so they battle on the outside, and then then so Steiner goes over the barricade, and Mike Awesome. I could only explain this as like he gave Steiner a flying hug. Yeah, because he jumped over the rope and he was just like. Uh, and they just mm-hmm. kind of like hugged and I was like, yeah. Oh, okay. Cause he landed almost standing. Yeah, ex- exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I'll give it to WCW. These two battle into the crowd and they really in like being in 2020, it's, it's made us miss live events, you know, and going to shows and things like that. This made me feel like I was at a live event because they were mm-hmm. battling into the crowd and there were so many fucking people around them that I had no mm-hmm. idea what was going on. Yeah. I just had to sit in my seat and wait for them to get back in the ring. Mm-hmm. So thank you, WCW in the year 2000. You made me feel like I was at a wrestling show when I couldn't <laughs> go to a wrestling show for the past You know what? I think I'm, infinite, I'm infamous for hating when they go outside. Yeah. And this may be the reason why. I've been scarred. And I, this is the trauma By WCW I WCW year 2000, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The trauma I experienced has just ruined me for future matches that go yeah. to the outside. Uh, the fight goes back into the ring area. Steiner gives Awesome a very soft chair shot, which I guess are all legal because I, I, the bell didn't ring. That's what I thought was happening. I thought the bell didn't ring yet, mm-hmm. but they never rang a bell. So I didn't even notice. I just figured it was WCW tomfoolery. Yeah. For a company that used to DQ people like going over the top rope, yeah. and now they're letting people <laughs> like just use chairs, it's, it's mm-hmm. a complete 180. Yeah, they're like, hey, man. Part of wrestling chairs. Steiner then gives Awesome uh, an amazing belly to belly off the top rope, resulting in a very close two count. It's that damn same ref who mm-hmm. knows those very close three counts. Good observation. Uh, Steiner has control until he's cut off by Awesome, giving him a front suplex off the ropes. Uh, this breaks down into a kind of like a hardcore match, kind of without Norman Smiley involved, though. Yeah. Uh, 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 oh, Jamie Tucker is the ref. Apparently, he's he's uh, uh, he's not a good ref. Good, like, good fine, good fine. Yeah, uh, um, awesome. It seems a little dangerous to me. Why is that? Uh, I don't know. He just in EC. Did you hear about the whole ECW uh, Paul Heyman handshake deal that they had, and then WCW offered him like fat money, so he bailed on Paul Heyman. 
I believe so, yes. As champion. Oh, and then yeah, they get the title off of him. Yeah. So then they had to use Taz to get the title off him, but Taz was booked. He was already working in WWE, so it was a time when Taz wrestled Mike Awesome for the ECW title mm-hmm. uh, when they were both non-ECW competitors. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so that was a debacle, but Paul Heyman did a really good job of A, making awesome awesome and making and putting him over and b hiding all his uh his uh you know uh, his his skills mm-hmm. hiding his bad skills yeah and he's exposed in wcw and in this match he's exposed i feel like he's dangerous and he can hurt somebody any minute i mean i just don't think he was at the prime of his career here you know like, i didn't yeah. see a whole lot in him but they he guy could work. I mean, I thought he could work, but he works that hardcore style. Yeah, that's why they they made the match as it is. Because he has, if he gets he, in the ring, he's exposed. He definitely had potential though to be. Better. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, eventually, he's not, he's not around anymore, right? No, he's he he passed away. He okay, passed God, away. I'm so sorry about the shit talk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like she's like hey, it's all good, dude. I'm just trying to throw some fat chicks up here. <laughs> Uh, so then, uh, at one point, awesome slam Steiner into the barricade area, almost directly into the ring announcer and the ring mm-hmm. announcer. I've never seen someone jump up and run so fast. This mm-hmm. guy jumped up and ran like 20, 30 feet. Like he almost got something, hit him in the head, yeah. you know, but, uh, let's see, let's see. Eventually the cat comes out to the ringside area. We get a belly to belly to awesome. Steiner setting up for the Steiner recliner, and uh, the cat said, oh, no, you don't. Uh Uh-uh. No. If you put on that Steiner recliner, I will strip you of that title. Yeah, and I don't understand their history. I don't remember what's going on there. Like, I don't know why he has such a hard-on for Scott Steiner. Maybe he kicked his ass once? Yeah, he probably probably did. Uh, So then he he sets up uh, for the Steiner. This this move is banned in the match, apparently. Mm -hmm. That's what I heard, I guess, going. At a certain point, they mentioned it. Uh, Steiner then sets up with another Steiner recliner. The cat said he'll strip him of the title. Steiner then flips off the uh, the cat, not with the middle finger, but with the, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, cat calls for the bell, strips Steiner of the U.S. title. So I guess it's a DQ finish, but Awesome's not the champion. So yeah, we don't know what's going to happen. You're going to have to stay tuned on to Nitro. So uh, Steiner then chases the cat down and knocks him out. Uh, they go. Uh, goes back to the ring, gives Awesome uh, another suplex. So, that was nasty, too. So, I mean, it was what it was. I thought these two guys could work, though. I mean, I... Uh, Steiner's had, been around for a long they time. They had a good, so he big, can, muscly guy can, match. Yeah, 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 totally. Just two big men so, going at it. And yeah. sometimes, you know, styles make matches. Yeah, exactly. And speaking of styles and matches... Uh, Vampiro versus, God, what was his name? Oh, the demon, Dale Torborg. Dale Torborg. Yeah, I love how they eventually just start calling Dale Torborg. Mm-hmm. Like, they're like, oh, no, that's just a guy in makeup, you know? Well, it's because, remember they did that whole Kiss promotion? Oh, yes, I remember. And he was a new member of Kiss, and they couldn't say, well, they did say demon, but you know how, um, what's his name? The douchebag from Kiss? Uh, Gene Simmons. Gene Simmons. He's also the demon. The, the demon uh, Gene Simmons, you know? He's so they the demon, Dale do- Torborg. To dis- yeah, to distinguish it. And he got a lot of press, so he had to use his real name. Wow. Well, I mean, I remember that night. That was uh, Tony Schiavone the entire, oh my God, Kiss is performing tonight. Oh my God. I'm like, dude, you've never been to a Kiss concert? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like 12 years old. <laughs> I was 13 years old. I think I've been to a Kiss concert at that point. Yeah. Uh, and a very horrible uh, China. What? Come on. Photocopy. It's Asia. It's not China. That, exactly my point. You know, huh. just, they just did that. Oh, a strong buff chick. Let's name her Asia as a dig to China. No, yeah. Come on, you guys. So this match starts with the demon Asia and Charles Robinson walking into the graveyard. This is a graveyard match. The first person to get back to the arena wins. What the hell is Robinson doing there? Uh, I well, he's a ref. It's a match. It's a match. Come on. Sure, but it's a ref. He, you need a ref. Th- there's no DQ. Although I gotta say, there? I gotta say though, the demon is asking way too much out of uh, Charles Robinson. Oh yeah, like there was like, like okay, so it starts off. So the demon looks at Asia and he's like, "Stay back." It's and it's like porn, like bad acting. I see you don't have a lifeguard here at your beach. 
Why not? The beach is a bathtub. Stay yeah. back. No, I want to go. Okay, Charles Robinson, watch out. Watch out for her over here. You know, like... You were waiting for the porn music to come on, yeah. Why was he telling... It, it never came. It never came. And Charles Robinson's like, I'll watch over her. Like, why is he? Why does he have to watch over her? She <laughs> yeah, chose yeah, to be yeah. there. She knows the, yeah. what's, she knows what's going to happen. And then while they're wrestling, uh, he has a flashlight. Oh, God, yeah. It's like the only light we have is oh, dude, his flashlight. The, the only light in this match, they're in a dark graveyard or just like a dark wooded area. And all the only light is like some natural light from like somewhere off to the side. And the somebody light. somebody with a fucking flashlight. And Charles Robinson mm-hmm. with a flashlight. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so okay. And everybody's wearing black. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the three walk upon a coffin. Asia opens it. Torborg goes uh, to strike Vampiro uh, in the heart with a dagger. He has like this flaming dagger thing where it's like mm-hmm. dagger down here. It's kind of cool, actually. Uh, Vampiro isn't in the coffin, though. This just enrages the demon. And Torborg screams, Vampiro, where are you? <laughs> and uh, Vamp then, uh, <laughs> he just jumps out of a tree. He's like... Yeah, <laughs> and and, and he doesn't Mark even Madden goes insane over it too. He doesn't even oh land God, on him. In the tree. He doesn't huh? even land on him. So what was the point of it? You know what I mean? Like hide behind a tree, and then you could have just like punched him. Well, he couldn't fucking see in that goddamn darkness. <laughs> <laughs> he was like a member of that like fucking uh, musical cat. He's just like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this match, like I said, it was very dark. Uh, only person had a flashlight, so it was very realistic. Uh, somebody said this is magnificent, brutal, and disturbing. I don't know why I wrote that down, but somebody said it. Uh, Vampiro then grabs Asia and walks somewhere. Demon crawls out of the grave slowly and grabs Charles Robinson and says, Where is he? And Robinson replies, Oh, that way. And he says, Oh, okay, thanks. Uh, this is, <laughs> is essentially now a foot race. The first person, I, that's what I thought was going to happen. I thought they were going to like, there's going to be different points in getting back to the arena. Mm hmm. Uh, the demon, which what they should have done. Yeah. So then he sees Asia in like a body of water, which I think is just like a cesspool of water somewhere, like outside mm-hmm. the arena. And, uh, so she's like in a fetal position, rocking back and forth. <laughs> and, uh, before the demon can figure out what's going on, Vampiro pops out of the water, <laughs> which, yeah. which I think is really funny because to do this, Vampiro has to pop out of the water and then walk over Remember the last time you popped out of water? You weren't mm-hmm. probably your fastest. Yeah. <laughs> you get it. You make it's all this motion, noise. Yeah. Whoosh, and then you're just like. That's like waist deep. That was at least waist deep water. Yeah. Uh, so then. Um, let's see. Uh, it was it was just bad. This is the demon and then apparently drowns Torborg, and only Charles Robinson can save the demon from drowning. The cameraman can do it. He had the whole thing. So I don't know why. Like I feel like the ref should have just been like, um, I just gotta make sure this guy gets back to the arena. I gotta go later. <laughs> right. I can't later, be dude. this. Yeah. So then uh the demon sees Asia laid out on the ground next to the coffin, and he goes to aid her. Vamp then slowly sits up. Uh, and out of the coffin and spits a red viscous fluid in the face of the demon. Mm. And uh, this is the second time he's been fooled by Asia, <laughs> who's been hypnotized mm. or something. I don't know. Yeah. And to a delayed reaction, too. Yeah. So, oh, my God. I have mist in my eye. Uh, then uh, Vamp says, do you want to live, die, or do you want to join me? And Damn, demon, what a dummy. The demon yells, me. never! <laughs> and then gets smashed in the head. Uh with a tombstone, with a, like some brick from a tombstone. A brick. So then Vamp then uh, loads the demon into a coffin and then flips it into an empty grave. He says, say hello to Sting for me. In hell. <laughs> you know, it was just, he spits oh, on the God. coffin and then throws, uh, <coughs> throws the dagger into the coffin area, which it was, it was on flame. So I was like, there's somebody in that coffin. Let's, let's not remember. Yeah. So yeah. then, okay, so at this point, Vampiro has to get back to the arena to win the match. Mm-hmm. They don't call him the winner now. Mm-mm. They're just like, oh, we'll see what happens. So that's what happened. You know what I mean? Like, what did you have to say about this? About you know, the whole match as a whole? Well, because the match is technically <laughs> over. No, he has to get back. Well, the next time we see him, he's walking, he's in the arena. Yeah, and that's when he wins. The next time we see him. 
So then the second he got, they should have had like a ticker tape parade waiting for him, like like yeah. you know, like a like a finish line, and like have balloons. and rang a bell officially, and then have a ref raise. His Here hand. is your yeah, winner, yeah. Vampiro. Yeah, and he's like, I don't care, I'm Vampiro. Bleh. I fart. Mm-hmm. Bleh. Um, but yeah, no, I I don't know, man. No, you're right. You're right. Hundred percent. So it was super um, anticlimactic. So what? what so it, all he does is he arrives, and then Hulk Hogan is there. Yeah, well, and we'll that's, get there that's, later. You yeah. get a little bit distracted, and then well, there's a whole you, thing. There's a whole thing. Yeah, okay, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, then Mean Gene is with the franchise. Shane Douglas. He says, "Okay, that, I have a question about Shane Douglas." Oh, maybe I won't be able to answer. But what's up? What, no, no, no. It's it's a general question. Where does this man lie in wrestling history? Is he overrated, underrated Hall of Famer, or just a, another guy? I mean, he did uh, pretty much invent ECW. As we know it today, oh, right. well, that it, him personally, but he's the reason why we have ECW as it is. I mean, you can't say he was underrated. I I felt like he was he's he got the right amount of credibility because like he was one of those guys that never made it to like the top. And if anyone wants to argue with me, they can. But he didn't. He was never the WWF champion. He was yeah. never the WCW champion. He was probably he's probably the ECW champion at one point, right? But he he was the he, he was the extreme champion the first extreme championship so what, champion. What I'm saying is uh, like I think he brought the WCW belt with him. Well, what I'm saying? Oh no, the, or was it the NWA belt? What the he world brought title? he brought a major title with him to ECW. If I remember correctly, again with you know the cry on will let you know what's happening. Um, but if I remember correctly, he either brought over the NWA title or the WCW title and did one of those throw it in the trash. I'm now the ECW champion. Uh, Shane Douglas sends a message. Oh, yeah, I think it was. Let's see. When did Shane Douglas throw down the NWA title? Uh, let's see. The key moments. Look back at the went down. They meant in wrestling history. On this day, Shane Douglas throws away the NWA championship on July of 1991. Relations between World Championship Wrestling and the NWA have begun to break down. And- mm-hmm. Yeah, there were stuff. Yeah. Okay, so he was semi WCW champion. But he was never like he was never the guy. I know what you're saying. I know what he you're was saying. not He was just Hogan. the guy in ECW. He was not Andre. He was not you know what I mean? Like even I think like I think he's about right there with Ron Simmons. You know what I mean? And Ron Simmons is in the Hall of Fame, so we can say he is. Yeah, a Hall I of guess, Famer. yeah, Shane Douglas, Hall of Famer. Okay. Cool. Done. There. Done. There. Uh, then we get Buff Bagwell versus Shane Douglas. This match sucked. <laughs> uh, wait, wait. It, it sucked until Tori showed up. Well, the uh, Buff then gets the crowd chanting "Franchise sucks" like because he wants. He's like, "Franchise sucks." Fra- Come on, everyone. Franchise sucks. Franchise sucks. Yeah, you hear all that? They're saying that about you. No. It's funny how Sting stole that franchise tag, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, so then there's a uh, we get a blurred out sign alert. Ooh, I wonder what mischievous things were being said in the '90s to have a blurred out sign. Uh, Douglas takes control and uh, rips off the floor mats to expose cake. More oh, cake. Yeah. <laughs> More cake. All the cake. It's a surprise run in by cake. It's in every crevice, just like sand when you go to the beach. You find uh, it everywhere. You find it everywhere. Uh, Douglas attempts a pile driver onto the cake, but then uh, Buff lifts Shane up for a backdrop. Uh, they get back into the ring. They have a wrestling match. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, Bagwell then uh, crotched on the steel post by Douglas. A uh, chair comes into play. Both men attempt to use it, but uh, both men stop each other until Douglas uh, punches the chair into Bagwell's face. Douglas then uh, begins working on Bagwell's repaired neck. Uh, Tori Wilson comes out to the ring and slaps Douglas in the face in front of the ref, mind you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Should have been a DQ, but whatever. Uh, Buff then takes over with a series of running crossbodies. Wilson then gets, it was in the ring now, and is making out with Buff. And he stops and uh, to pose because, you know, what do you do when you make out with a lady? You want to pose to everyone watching, you know? <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> do I see that? Anyway, so, mm. someone like, sees you make out with a chick, I'm like, hey, guys. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah, you wish you could be me. Um, to be fair, if Tori Wilson made out with me, I'd probably do that. I probably would. Gosh, check it out. Mm. 
uh, then uh, well, she'd probably proceed to do the same thing and uh, give you a low blow. Oh. <laughs> uh, low, low blow? Wait, what? <laughs> she said low blow. Didn't she give him a low blow? Yeah, 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 yeah but yeah. I meant, you know, like the other way. Oh, it's, I got you now. Uh, stupid joke. I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's all good. Uh, I just didn't get it. <laughs> First thing I was like, wait, what? <laughs> uh, Buff uh, poses it. She kicks him right in the nuts. Uh, it was a faster heel turn than the big show. Uh, Pitts, uh, we get a, what's, what is this movie called? The Pittsburgh Plex? Oh, oh I, I don't, yeah, I don't remember. Uh, then a double arm DDT to Douglas. Uh, Buff is on the top, uh, middle rope. He gets knocked down by the ring by Tori to the ringside, but Douglas was able to grab Buff, gives him the inverted atomic drop, gives him modified STO, uh, atomic drop to Buff Bag while he gets the pin in the win. So. Hey man, it was as my it was as good as a Buff Bagwell match could really be, right? Yeah. So uh, then we get uh, Hogan. Uh, apparently he's here, and uh, Mean Gene just told Jeff Jarrett and Jarrett just says, "Jane, you Jurassic slap ass." Oh my god, that was line of the oh, night. That was great. I, see I, you later, slappy. That, that's <laughs> what I want to see, see. Like you know, like Bash the Beach two thousand, like in quotations, Jurassic slap ass, Jeff Jarrett. Yeah, there you go. So, so here we go. Jeff Jarrett versus Hulk Hogan hmm, for in the middle of the night. The match. Okay. Change. Well, do you want? Oh, how, how do we want to go about this? Do we want to tell what what people say the story was? Do we want to get, we'll talk about? No. Let's 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 go through it and then we'll go with the theories and the okay. Rumor in innuendo in the in the hard court facts. Okay, so the feud between uh, feud between Jeff Jarrett and Hulk Hogan has been going on for quite some time now, uh, stemming from both of them being in the NWO and fighting for control. Eventually, Jeff Jarrett did take over. Was it the Silver and Black NWO? Jeff Jarrett was the NWO. Wasn't he like Silver and Black NWO leader? Yeah, sure. Uh, Yeah. Uh, So then uh, Jeff Jarrett takes a long time to come to the ring, and out comes Vince Russo with him. And mind you. uh, Probably the only good choice Vince Russo ever made was a very stylish uh, San Francisco Giants jersey. Number 25. Number 25, Barry Bonds, your home run king, by, mind you. Hey, all of you. Mm-hmm. All of you out there, that's your, that's your home run king. Just remember that. No asterisk. Yeah, no, none. He's the king. Anyways, uh, <laughs> that'll get his views. Or how the kids would say, no cap. Uh, oh, uh, so they, uh, so okay, that should say something that the champion's coming out first. Mm-hmm. Out comes Hogan to his dubbed over music. They're not playing. Oh, uh, come on. I know. Uh, they don't have any money over at uh, Peacock to play playing, for Voodoo they're playing. Child. They're playing the NWO theme. Uh, so, uh, like I said, out comes Hogan. He takes uh, his time to come out to the ring. And once he does, he gets on the mic and says, You know something, Jeff Jarrett? He says, <laughs> You may be the chosen one, but I've chosen to give you a power bomb in the middle of this ring for my friend, Big Sexy. I was like, What? I was like, What does Kevin Nash have to do with this? Yeah, nothing. <laughs> Nothing, nothing at all. Like, it was just like somebody trying to be like, like, get your friend involved when the friend doesn't want to be involved. Mm-hmm. Right? It's like, oh, yeah, this is for Big Sexy. And Kevin Nash is like, hey, dude, I don't care. <laughs> you know. So um, Jared is standing on the ramp. He goes back up to the ramp. He's looking pissed, conflicted, and confused. Mm-hmm. Uh, he comes back out to the ring. Uh, the bell rings, and Jeff Jarrett instantly lies down. Russo uh, begins yelling at Hogan, pointing at Jeff Jarrett, telling him to pin him. But honestly, though, Hogan looks pretty confused here, too. Mm-hmm. He does look confused. He may be playing into it. Uh, given the stories I've heard, he's playing into this. Mm-hmm. Uh, Russo throws the belt in the ring and walks away, and uh, Hogan gets on the mic and says, uh, Is this your deal, Russo? That's why this company is a damn shame it is, because of bullshit like this. Hogan then puts his boot on Jeff Jarrett. He gets the pin and Hogan's the win. Hogan's a bad word. Ooh. Uh, gets the pin and the win, and uh, Jeff Jarrett gets up immediately and just walks away. And, yeah. So, uh, okay, so what really happened? Or what did I hear happen? Apparently, the story is, is that Jarrett was going to have two matches anyways. The story was is that Jarrett was going to beat Hogan and then go mm-hmm. on to face... You know, and then attack uh, Booker T and then get a shot later in the night uh, Mm -hmm. against Booker T. So the Booker T match was always going to happen. Because it was foreshadowed at the beginning. Exactly. And he interfered in Booker T's match. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, and you know, 
they, you know, whatever. People could be like, well, you know, Hogan said be, before the show that he didn't want to lose the match and he wanted to win the title. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then Russo, uh, Hogan didn't want to, he wanted to win the title. Hogan mm-hmm. did. Uh, that's when Russo and uh, apparently all of WCW creative wanted Booker T to win the title. Mm-hmm. So they said, this is what's going to happen. And then Hogan was like, oh, that's going to be cool. This is Russo's story, mind you. Uh, he says, oh, okay, that's cool. Then we'll have two titles and then we'll we'll battle for the titles. Um, so, I mean, like, that's like, I mean, I, that's kind of an interesting storyline. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, because <laughs> he said it. He's like, this is from now on. This is the whole Hogan Memorial Belt. Exactly, and uh, so that's what was supposed to happen. And then apparently, you know, like people started really buying into it, and like, oh, someone finally told Hogan to say, you know, like fuck you, and they mm-hmm. told Hogan to shove it. And I guess Hogan started getting pissed off and started following through with it, and you know, started pulling out of dates for WCW at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, That's actually fact. Yeah. So then Russo also said something about, he goes, hey, listen, the people at Network, bro, they said, don't bring Hogan back. He costs too much money, bro. So I was like, hey, listen, we were going to talk about it, but the Networks don't want me to bring you back. What am I supposed to do, bro? That sounds like an excuse. (laughs) (laughs) Allegedly. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I don't know. It is what it is at that point, but Mm -hmm. that's what I heard happened. So yeah, I, 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 I heard the he, same thing, but you know, I, I generally don't trust a word Hulk says. Yeah. I, did you hear the Hogan side? Or? Uh, I did. And he, he was like coming up with excuse after excuse. Oh, I knew it was going to happen. Yeah. We played it out like that. We wrote it out like that. Um, but they disrespected me because I have, I have something that's called creative control, but I'm down with everything. Why the fuck you lying? You know, he played that. Role. Sure. Hulkster. Yeah. Uh, so then, uh, so then, uh, no time though, uh, no time to waste, because Vampiro is here, and apparently he's won the match. Yeah, but, hey but Vampiro, you won Vampiro, woo! Yeah, and then we see Hulk in the hallway, with, and he doesn't look very happy, and you know he has these two little uh, some kids little carrying kids titles. Yeah, he's carrying the title. You little fucking kids! I said I only got to hold the WC to the US title. I never got to hold the big gold belt. Mm. Hey man, sorry. Yeah, but you know this happened on camera, so you know how you know what they say. If it happens on camera, it's well, meant to be on camera. Well, yeah, it, it's it's. Is this a work or is this a shoot? We don't know. <laughs> Thank oh. you, Tony Schiavone. Oh. Yeah. So then, I, okay, I forgot to say, like after that whole thing with the Jeff Jarrett situation, the the commentators are basically like doing a podcast afterwards. Yeah, they're like. So what do you think really happened there? So okay, so what happened is uh, Russo told Hogan to shove it, and that's great because someone's got to do that, you know. And it was it was kind of cool for a second, but it, it, there was too many situations where it would just cut to the to the commentator desk, and it would just be the and a bunch desk. of times it would catch Mark Madden like this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can't believe what happened. So super uh, like selling it, and you could he was lathering up the ham. Yeah. You could tell he was just horrible actor, Mark. I'm sorry. Again, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, I don't care. Uh, no time to waste, though, because Vampiro <laughs> is back at the arena. Uh, Vampiro comes to the ring, and the commentators are still talking about Hogan and Jeff Jarrett. Vampiro says the demon is dead, and um, that's when Sting Druids come to the ring, pushing a coffin on wheels to the ring. Fans are chanting for Sting. Vamp uh, goes to the coffin and opens it, and a Stingish figure pops out of the coffin. And this frightens Vampiro, and the Stingish figure attacks Vampiro, and the lights are flashing like it's a damn fucking like rave from the movie Blade, and mm. the camera is like on the Stingish person's back. It's not Sting. No, it's not Sting. It's no way. This person's way too skinny to be Sting, and the commentators are trying to sell it like it's Sting without mm. actually saying that's Sting right yeah, there. Yeah. They're like, "Well, could that be Sting? Is that Sting? Was, was it Sting? Could it be Sting?" Stig's been gone. Stig's been gone. That, (laughs) but he's been gone. It's like, all right, guys. Like, it's not Sting. Like, I don't know. Yeah, and I think his uh, definitely his music was dubbed over too. Yeah, yeah. Because at the time he had the Metallica theme. Oh, did he? Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm-hmm. I I, I didn't didn't know he had a Metallica theme song. Mm -hmm. Uh, So then Goldberg with Mean Gene and uh, Berg just stares at Mean Gene. 
and says uh, it's taking all his strength not to rip up the contract, but he wanted to do it in Kevin Nash's face. So, what you expect? And here we go, Vince Russo, bro. Uh, I don't know. Okay, so Vince Russo comes out to the ring. He says, "Day one, I've been dealing with the bullshit in the politics behind the curtain." He goes, I have a wife and kids. I don't need this shit. Oh, and right there is where I noticed his watch. What, I don't know why I saw his watch. I just, it caught my eye. Uh-huh. It was upside down, and it was on a timer clicking backwards. Oh. Like, <laughs> Maybe he was just telling him, yeah, telling him how long to go. How much time you got, buddy? So uh, Russo adds that he came to WCW for the guys that give a shit about this company. You know, the ones... Uh, who don't give a shit are the goddamn politics like Hulk Hogan. I don't know why I said like I'm from Fargo. <laughs> oh, you know, like Hulk Hogan, he's not good for this company, you know. <laughs> That's what Andre used Bret, to say. It. Bret Hart. Oh, you know, Hulk Hogan, he's a damn <laughs> scumbag, you know. He can't be in this company. Seth Rollins, he's a terrible worker. Uh, Russo then begins talking down Hogan and about his creative control clause. Russo then promises you'll never see that piece of shit. Ever again. Russo says, the fans won't get ripped off tonight, though. Hogan uh, has a WCW belt. Well, consider that the Hulk Hogan Memorial belt, because I don't give a shit, because there will be a new WCW belt here, and which there won't be a new belt, uh, as no, far as I'm concerned. No. And, uh, yeah, it was like the old bent one. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and the rifle champion, as far as I'm concerned, the rifle champion is Jeff Jarrett. Russo then uh, makes a WCW title match later for tonight. Booker T versus the official champion, Jeff Jarrett. So. Hey, it's, for me, this is one of the greatest promos of all time. <laughs> I mean, it, it was real. Like, you know what I mean? It, it was, was realistic. Real. You know what I mean? He hit it. Yeah. Uh, he, he had the right jersey on because he hit it out of the ballpark. Oh. Call him Barry Bonds because he just knocked it out of Well, again. okay, I'm not, not 756 times, but, uh, you know. Two-run shot, Homer, to outfield, left center. This one he wrote. He, he saw it. High fly ball. That one was out of here. See, now, is it a pie bomb? Probably not. No. Close, but probably not. <laughs> yeah. uh, CM Punk. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It was a good promo. Um, everyone hates on it because it's Vince Russo. You know what I mean? Screw that. That was hella dope. But I love this. I think if they would have was... continued with the Hogan Booker T thing and have the belt for belt thing, that would have been decent. Yeah, but then it, it, if, it if if Booker would have went over in the end. 100%. But you know what happens is it tarnishes the memory of this cuz then it legitimizes that it was all just a work. We got worked. That's true. Now there's always this question of work, shoot, what? what? Well, but, I mean, yeah. we know that it's, you know, 75% work, yeah. at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, here we go. Kevin Nash versus Bill Goldberg for Scott Hall's contract. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, so these two men go back and forth. Nash hits a choke slam to Berg. Wait, wait. Oh, wait. Okay, hold on. <laughs> oh, all right. So I didn't even write this down. So Nash is coming out to the ring. This is like one of the funniest moments of the show. And he comes out to the ring, and he's coming through the hallway. It's like kind of like Bill Goldberg style, not with like the police guarding him, but you know, with uh, just coming through his lo- the locker room area. And he sees Scott Steiner, and I don't know what the fuck Scott <laughs> Steiner is doing in the corner, but Scott is just like, "Hey yo, hey, yeah, all right." <laughs> like, like it seemed like Steiner was doing something he shouldn't have been doing. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that would have been because there's a few well, things I could have thought of. <laughs> Yeah, no, because he said, uh, hey, Steiner, get in the game. And my, Steiner and Steiner goes, my game's right here. <laughs> I, so I thought. So he that, had to have Medeja there with so him. So right? was there a girl right there with him? Yeah, exactly. Either Medeja or, or one of the freaks on the front row. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> my game's right here. <laughs> I thought it could have also been something a, a little bit more explicit, like, you know. Oh, he was getting a blowy. A, no, car. well, I mean, a, sorry, illicit. Oh, okay. Some sort Maybe of. Maybe he was substance. doing a rail. Doing a rail with some of that advice. Hey, my line's right here. My game's <laughs> yeah. right here. <sighs> That's why he's so... <laughs> he's about to do a run-in on this next match, Nash. <laughs> Heel <No>. turn! <laughs> um, That's what they told yeah. me. Nash is like, Scott, God damn, you fucking stainer. Hey, hey, you guys, don't let Scott know we were talking about him. We love you, Scotty. Yeah. Do the best. 
yeah, so they they just have a match. I I didn't like it. I wrote like barely anything down. Slow start, uh, back and forth with Goldberg with the edge. Scott comes down Tuck for Nash. sport. And apparently the team of fucking Scott Steiner and Goldberg was a thing. I don't remember that at all. I but you know what? Back in those days, uh, programs used to last a day and you were supposed to forget about it. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is, I mean, how much longer does WCW have? Six months? Eight months? Wasn't it? This was, 2001 yeah, is like when they sold, yeah. It was like January 2001, right? No, January, February? February, February, March is when they sold. February, right okay, before, so it was right before WrestleMania, remember? Six, seven. Okay, so there's like seven. Seven, eight seven months, months yeah. left. Mm-hmm. Uh, after this match, Goldberg rips off uh, or rips up uh, Scott Hall's contract. Uh, Steiner puts Nash in the Steiner recliner. And uh, I feel like Steiner should like actually have a, like, a set of recliners. Like, <laughs> buy a recliner for your fit ass! You can put an imprint of his body in it. That's the only way he's going to sell it. Yeah. Uh, me and Gene then book, with Booker T backstage. Booker T says, when opportunity uh, is knocked, and I'm here to take that gold. Good for you, Booker T. Uh, I love his like perfectly lined like mustache and flat top, too. It's just, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's on point. Very 90s. Yeah. Uh, the commentators uh, all night. Oh, we didn't expect this match to happen at all, guys. Wow. Whoa. Wow. We, I, I mean, we're, we're going to get some heat for this on the internet. Yeah. We're, we're not working you, fans. We're not working you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all night, man. Uh, so this is the main event. Booker T, Jeff Jarrett, uh, 13 minutes and 41 seconds for the WCW title. Uh, Booker looks very, ex- very excited at the beginning of this match. Because, mm-hmm. you know, like when people do like the whole, uh, he was doing it in like such a way where like he couldn't control his movements. He was almost jumping he, out he of his, like, ah! his boots. Yeah. Ah! yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even Jeff Jarrett was probably like, dude, calm down. You're about yeah. to win the title. Like act like a champion. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you've been here before, buddy. Yeah. Uh, the two start off with some basic decent wrestling, trading holds and strikes back and forth. They brawl into the crowd and get some more, uh, like, fans, like, so many people. And that's the thing about 2000s, like, going to a show. Like, the fans, like, followed them when they were in the ring, like, outside of the area, mm-hmm. ring area. Like, nowadays, you see, like, people brawling into the crowd. You don't see fans follow them like that. No, no, no. I think it's and they have more what they also did them. was, uh, as soon as they passed them, they would jump in the cam on the camera. Yeah. Hey. Like, I'm trying to watch what's going on. No, you're not. Thank God for smartphones. Everyone has a fucking camera. Everyone has now yeah, seen a camera. Yeah. Before people were like, well, I got a camera. They film like something random and stupid. Let mm-hmm. me get on camera. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, do you remember when you were a kid and like you would see like you'd go to a store and they had video cameras for sale and you're like, Whoa, I'm on TV. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. I still do it at Walgreens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, well, and the security camera, you're like, yeah, <laughs> Kit Kat goes, in. look at me, you guys. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> so then uh, these two, like, they go back and forth. Tony Schiavone says, uh, well, we'll never forget Bash at the Beach 2000. Guess not, 21 years later, right? Mm-hmm. Jeff Jarrett gives Booker a pile driver, uh, into the very small WCW, WCW announcer's table, which is like, some Ikea furniture that someone built and wasn't like a breakaway table like in WWE. Yeah. It's a shitty, it looks like a shitty table. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeff Jarrett. Okay, so the story of this match is like Booker T is getting closer and closer throughout the match. He would get some offense in, Jarrett would cut him off. He gets some more offense in, Jarrett would cut him off. He gets some more offense in, Jarrett would cut him off. And eventually mm-hmm. he got to the point where he got he won the match. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, like Jarrett goes for the year four a couple times. Uh, the first time it was almost cradle victory for Booker T, but the second time it was applied. Uh, the fans are firmly behind Booker T Uh, for a big dude. He's doing these, you know, sunset flips and small packages and all these, you know, super technical young, uh, not want to say young, but like little guy moves. Yeah. And this guy's a massive human being. So Booker T looks. Yeah. 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 He is. He has a very big handshake. He made fun of my handshake. And I said, he did? I said, wow, you have a nice handshake, Booker T. He says, yeah, that's what you call a man's handshake. And I said, thank you, Booker T. Goodbye. <laughs> and I felt offended. So thank, thank you, Booker you, T. Thank you, Mr. Booker. <laughs> thank you. I don't have giant hands like you, Booker. Mm. Body shame me. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't care. 
Uh, yeah, it's 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 my my interaction with Booker T. Mm-hmm. Uh, eventually, he gets an axe kick to Jeff Jarrett, spin a Rooney, sidewalk slam to Jeff Jarrett, kicks out of a pin. Uh, Booker is then tossed into the ref. Jeff Jarrett tries to use the title, but Booker ducks it and grabs the title, strikes Jeff Jarrett, a uh, pin attempt, but a kick out. Jarrett wedges a chair into the corner, but he's tossed into it by Booker T. Screwdriver to the ref by Jeff Jarrett, which I was like, all right, whatever. Uh, Jeff Jarrett kicks Booker T, uh, low blows him. And Do we get dunk. the sleeper hold yet? Do we get past that? Well, I mean, like, I didn't really write down the whole sleeper hold. Okay, well, you know, the sleeper hold, the only reason why I bring that up is because they did the classic three-arm drop. Oh, one, that's right, yeah. Two, Instead of the one, yeah. Three, oh, well, he ain't out yet. He well, what I liked yet. about that is the ref was like, he turned around and he was like, ring the, and he was like, oh, no, don't ring the bell. He just picked up his hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, good job, ref. See, I missed that. The tapping out, I'm not a big fan of. Uh, UFC changed the game. That's true. Um, so I said, Jeff Jarrett wedges the chair in the corner. He gets tossed on himself. He takes out the ref. Uh, Jeff Jarrett kicks Booker T in the ding dong. He goes to the top rope with a guitar to strike Booker T. Booker T then catches Jeff Jarrett coming off the top rope with the guitar, hits the bookend, the rock bot. Oh, yeah, the bookend, the bookend, and uh, gets the pin and the win. And the new well, another ref comes out to the ring and counts a three count. So WCW champion Booker T, it's his first title win, right? Uh, first heavyweight championship. Yeah, dude, I've marked out like a mofo when this happened. Yeah, man. As Good a for kid, him. man. Ooh, this was a great moment. I was like, oh, whoa, Booker. I, mean, I, I was always a big fan of Booker T. I mean, like I said, I wasn't watching at that point, but uh, I feel like my dad was like, yeah, the right guy won. Mm-hmm. Um, we all went home happy. Yeah. Yeah. WCW knew how to book a Booker T uh, storyline, unlike WWE and Triple H mm. uh, for that same title. Mm hmm. Whatever. I have some. Ooh, we should we do that one next? No, we should do that when we, we need should to actually think of major shows stress. Gonna, we should think of shows we're going to do before we. Uh... <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's uh, Bash to the Beach 2000. Uh, anything else you want to add before we get out of here, Jose? What do you think as a whole? I mean, it had some decent matches. I mean, I think people really shit on the show in general, but it's not a bad show. There are shitty parts. I don't think it's a really bad show. I think just the the part of the whole like uh, insider knowledge, insider terms being used all night, exposing the business, exposing yeah. the. Well, I don't really give a shit about exposing the business, but the but fact like, that they're like, like it's yeah that they're feeding into exposing mm-hmm, the business. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it just to me, it was like a little like eh, I was like ah, but like it really overshadowed like. Like I said, uh, the tag team match, it overshadowed uh, even Mike Awesome and Scott Steiner. Like, nobody really remembers that from this ma- this show. They just talk mm-hmm. about the the Jarrett laying down. Yeah, and the opener. Uh, come on, Hoovy and Chavo. Yeah, exactly. Lieutenant Loco? Come on. Come on. Yeah. Eventually, he opens come up on. his own company. He calls it for Loco. Come on, Major Guns having a... A strippy moment, as well as Miss Keebler, uh, Miss Hancock. Hancock. Hancock, get it? And then you throw in a Tory Wilson, and there goes my, you know, adolescent years in a nutshell. Um, yeah. I wouldn't say it was a great show. By no means is it great. Historic, yes. Um, one of the coolest promos by uh, a person in charge, yes. Um, Booker uh, T. Winning. I mean, yeah, it was it was emotional. Yeah, it, Booker it was T. Real. Winning. F and five thumbs up. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's a roller coaster. What can you do? WCW 2000. Yeah. You can't expect much. And this was above and beyond for WCW 2000. That's true. That's true. <laughs> well, I think that about does it here for, uh, for us today. We're going to get out of here. Uh, we're going to have another show, another retro show next month. Uh, if you like this retro show and you want to stay up to date with more retro shows, because, like I said, we do more. Uh, check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, uh, where we give you some heads up that about what shows we're doing, like little hints. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling in a summer slammy mood. Ooh, yeah. I mean, summer slam is coming up. Oh, yeah. I got some ones I could think of. All right. Well, uh, we won't discuss this on air. We will have a business meeting about this and talk about it later. Until then, have a wonderful day, and we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.